Okay, so I felt a rant coming on, so I decided to record it. It's about the Federal Reserve, and it's it's not just the obvious things I wanted to point out. It's, I mean, the obvious. Let me just preface that or um, talk about that. What what I'm talking. Set up context for this. The, um, the thing people understand, the Federal Reserve is mysterious, and it shouldn't be. Uh, you've heard Ron Paul say, audit the Federal Reserve. For good reason. They There's accusations out there that say they don't disclose where the money goes. They have all this, these trillions of dollars in transactions, and they say it goes somewhere, and, and we have to trust them, and they won't. There's videos of, of them, even Bernie Sanders asking Ben Bernanke, where does the money go? And he's like, mm, I'm not going to tell you. And so it's huge. It's like some scandalous stuff. And you guys are crooks, maybe. <clears throat> and and that's something that, what do you do about that? Or, or, or why? Um, and people talk about what the effects are. And, and some people, I've, I've heard, there's a video of a guy saying, the 2008 bailout was one of the largest robberies ever conducted on the American people. And that's what prompted me to, to write, to, to record this video. Because I think when people hear that, they, they might judge it and say, what, what robbery? I go to work and I get paid the same amount. I, get, I mean, how could um, bankers be actually making my life worse when I'm, I'm still, I can still buy things. My life isn't worse. Everything's fine. I work 40 hours a week and I, I get paid and I, I can buy food. So things are okay. Which is it's true. I mean, in the first world, life isn't, life isn't actually that hard for us. We can, we can do it. And, and I think this is the point. And bankers, sorry, I don't want to put too much hyperbole in this. Um, so let me just use to find my terms. When I, I'm going to say bankers, and what I mean by that is, if there is some kind of conspiracy to to keep large imbalance in society, where few people oligarchy. If there is some kind of conspiracy to to keep an oligarchy strong, where a few people control most of the power, if that exists, let's call these let's call the the group responsible. Let's call them bankers. Sorry. I know that's not entirely accurate. I don't know what to call it. All right, so let's say. All right, the um, I lost my place. <clears throat> so these bankers. Let me backtrack. weird to be recording something and, and, and organize your thoughts not necessarily as organically as they would, you know, when you're, when you're trying to explain something and you don't have it written down. Um, it's a little different. So what I was talking about, you know, when Senator Bernie, Bernie Sanders asked Ben Bernanke where the money went, he's like, no. And people say, well, maybe these guys are crooks. Maybe the bankers are crooks. And, oh yeah, <clears throat> society doesn't notice that, my point is society doesn't notice that we are being robbed. Because they look at their life and they say, I'm not being robbed. You know what robbery means when you actually, you have $1,000 and then someone takes a lot of the chunk of that. Now you have less money. And it's like, it happens like that, and you're like, oh my god, I was robbed. Okay, that's obvious robbery. If someone mugs you on the street, you know you're robbed. Took your money, actually, in one second. What I think is happening by the, the bankers <clears throat> is not obvious. I would still argue it is robbery. Very much so. 
here's what I'm going to explain. Let me explain. Our economy is altered by these moves that the bankers are doing. And the moves I'm talking about are, well, I don't know exactly. Let's leave that aside for now. But I'll, I'm going to argue that the, the economy is worse than it could be. Maybe much worse. So that's the argument. And I'm going to get to a couple aspects of that. Here's why it's not obvious. Here's why we don't notice that we're being robbed. <clears throat> we work 40 hours a week. We get paid a livable wage. This is, I mean, the middle class. Okay. We, we've always done this in a sense. It's, it's not, I mean, life has gotten better, you know, a little bit better over, over the past hundreds, many hundreds of years. Life has gotten better. Nice. Uh, I think it could be much better because our technology has increased like this, but our economy has increased sort of like this. And there's, you know, those are just words. What I mean is um, technology is supposed to make things easier. And I know our population is growing too, which offsets. There's all kinds of numbers and, and all kinds of variables. But let's look at this. Technology has gotten much better in these past hundreds of years. But our, <clears throat> our lives have gotten better, but not by the same rate. And I think the reason that it's not the same rate is because of the, the robbery, the, uh, the, the crime by Wall Street or the bankers. I don't know. That part I'm not an expert in, but I'm not trying to argue that. <clears throat> what I'm saying about the technology thing, I hope I'm not, ugh, this video might suck. Sorry. We don't notice we're being robbed because the economy is being robbed. The economy, if, if there were much more fair play, much more efficiency in the way money is dis distributed from our work, the middle class's work, to the money that generates, if the mo money was distributed much more fairly, I think everyone's life in the middle class would be significantly easier. Let's imagine a scenario. You work, let's, let's just talk about, just throw things out there, 20 hours a week, and, you're, and you live uh, as a parallel, say you may, you'd make, in this economy, you'd make a quarter million a year for 20 hours a week of, I don't know, office work, of, of doing basic things, but you can afford more things. I'm sure that's got to be wrong in some ways. But that's, that's what I'm talking about, is, is that a more efficient economy would lead to less effort and more reward. That's what, that's what it means. That's what the goal is. Of course, if everyone worked half as much, we'd have half as strong of an economy. But there's, I mean... That doesn't mean that what I'm saying is wrong, okay? It just means, yeah, there, it wouldn't. If if we were just to flip a switch and everyone got way more money and they'd work less, yeah, it would break things. But that may be true, but that doesn't mean that the other parts aren't also true. And the solution isn't necessarily just to give everyone mansions and yachts. That's not the solution. But there is a solution, and the solution is not to give the bankers or whomever, the billionaires or whomever, the yachts and the mansions. Just them. That's not the solution. That's what we have now. That's the oligarchy that we have now. And I argue it's incorrect. It's 
not the way things should be. We are being robbed, and it's not fair. It's crime. And if, if things were all transparent, if everything was transparent, if everyone knew everything, there'd be more punches in the face. Instead of the guy who's, you know, working 50, 60 hours a week, making barely livable wage, versus the guy who works nothing. You could even argue he works negative because people work for him. And he or she makes millions. And that's the work a negative amount. Significantly. He's, he or she's got so much money, they can't possibly spend it all, but they hoard it anyway. And maybe there's some kind of plan to help. Who, you know, maybe there is this secret thing, and, and maybe they, people that control, people that control our our culture, our society, <clears throat> maybe they have a plan to help. And maybe they think, oh no, we we need a slavery class. You know, hopefully they can still buy hamburgers, but we need the slaves in order to make things work. Because if you know, if we gave into utopia and ideas, society would collapse. And maybe that's true. I don't know. But I do know there's... I do know <clears throat> that when you steal from an economy at a high level like that, the effects are hidden. Because everyone, they don't know they're being stolen from. They, they their, po their pocketbooks, you know go down like this over time and it's very hard to detect but the effects are you work harder and you get less and everyone's okay with it because that's what everyone else is doing everyone that they see everyone else in the middle class it's genius right it's like religion it's very clever what can we do like Bernie Sanders I guess you think that's going to really go down? How can they, they, let it go down? Who knows? What I wanted to point out, I know it's 12 minutes into this, 12 minutes, 13 minutes into this. When people say that you're being robbed from, they don't, I mean, in the traditional sense, the economy is weighed down by people taking, taking the profits. Yeah, the middle class generates cash, generates, um, the word is, it, you know, generates uh, income or, or product value, generates energy, I don't know what to say, money products, services, generates things. And all that it generates with our technology these days should be able to support us, the whole world, much better. Oh, maybe that's, that's the real crime. It's not that the middle class should get yachts. It's that there shouldn't be a third world. It said there shouldn't be a third world. Maybe that's the real negative effect of, of, of this robbery. You know, I mean, I'm, a, I'm an idealist talking. I'm talking like an idealist right now. And, and I'm talking like a socialist communist, right, or something. But let's really look at this. If you it, it just say, what would happen if you did a re redistribution of all wealth no one would be poor. There's enough money per human on the planet to give everyone a lot of money. More money than I have. And I live in the first world. But there are people living in the third world, and there's even a lot of them. <laughs> Why? Because, because of greed. Imagine you have a yacht and a mansion. Well, it's not just greed. So imagine you imagine you have a yacht and a mansion. What are your choices? I could give it all up and save the whole world? No. 
that wouldn't happen. You gave it all, you could donate it 90% of your charity, you'd save thousands of people. Great. But not everyone, there would still be poverty, massive poverty. If everyone did that, okay, then yeah, poverty is eradicated. Great. But not everyone's going to do it all at once. Do we even want that? Is the economy bolstered by uh, in by, by by capitalism? Yeah, absolutely. It's you can't even argue against that. Capitalism drives an economy. Greed drives an economy. It's, it's, it's no question. You want more. You you work harder. You get more. It's a one to one to one relationship. It's great. I'm not arguing against capitalism. I'm arguing that we need to be honest with ourselves. We need to really stop ignoring this and really see what's really happening. It's not when we say, oh, someone, I'm, I'm imagining someone in middle America saying, re hearing someone else on the far left saying, oh my God, the bankers are robbing you and they're saying well no that's not true look at my pocketbook I I've, I've got 40 bucks I if I, it was being robbed I'd have zero bucks or something I don't know what they're thinking but they don't see what's what the actual effects are because they're hidden they are hidden effects so it makes sense for them not to see and then that's exactly what the bankers count on they count on humans being humans and not having a a large attention span you know and that's why we're easy targets because of our short attention span something I mean, you saw the movie wag the dog it's 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 out there people the the truth is out there lots of people are talking about the truth but we forget I mean I'm gonna forget I'm gonna go back to work I'm gonna get focused on my work and I'm not gonna remember what I'm talking about and then I'll maybe I'll remember later it's why we need leaders like Bernie Sanders more people like him and Elizabeth Warren just that the people who are leading us need to be the selfless because we can't take care of ourselves and we elect people that are like us greedy No, elect people who are going to take care of us, who are, self, who are selfless, are going to push for fairness and equality. And no, we don't want communism. We do want capitalism. There's, there is many solutions. Don't think that just because we're talking about socialism that we're going to convert to communism. It's silly. Learn what that word means. It mean we are we are the United States is already socialist. Okay? Bernie is talking about the best parts of socialism socialism and and using a government strategy to actually help people. And some of that is auditing the Federal Reserve and regulating Wall Street. And things that should be obvious because we are being robbed by something called oligarchy. I don't know the names of the people. I don't know any billionaires. Well, I know a few names of a few billionaires, I guess, Bill Gates and all that. And, I, and, 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 and why do I even care? My life is fine. I live in the first world. I've got a t-shirt, I got a dog and a child and a wife and a, another dog actually, two, two dogs, a couple of cats. A good job, I got a good job this year, last year. So why do I care? And this is my point. I, that's why I should not elect someone just like me. Because I'm a regular guy. 
I'm not currently a public servant. If I were in Bernie Sanders' shoes, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. It sounds like a very honorable title. It sounds like a lot of work. It sounds like, you know, you got to argue for things that, you, that it's hard to actually believe in. You have to understand that what's really good for an economy, what's really good, not just personal wealth, you have to strengthen it from the base. You have to give people some thing to be happy about. Not just the top. Trickle down. I don't know. Anyway, vote Bernie Sanders. Please.